in this video, we're going to break down what is the best way to build AI custom chat bots without having to know how to code, without paying hefty lump sums, without setting up any servers. Um, to do this, we, we have options. We have voice flow. We have bot press. We have stack AI. We have flow wise. We have length flow. I've tried them all. I'm well versed in quite literally all of them. And I found what I will recommend today is going to be voice flow. Okay. So if we want to go on voice flow, we'll just type voiceflow.com and we'll get on the landing page. Traditionally, they are a web two chat flow builder. They're made specifically to make customer servers, bots, and things of that nature. They have recently added AI implementation and they're actually working on a new version that's going to take the AI to the AI stuff to the next level. So this tool is quite well enriched with all the necessary things that you would require to build a chatbot AI agent, actually, that you would like to build. Okay. This is all can be done for free. Okay. There's no credit card required if you're getting the sandbox version, which gives you a hundred thousand AI tokens. Okay. If you want to go to take it to the next level, you can buy the pro for only $40 per month and you get a million monthly AI tokens as well as custom branding. And then if you want anything more than that, you can go for the enterprise, which gives you much, much more um, things that you can work out with the team to get your own custom solution. The beauty of voice flow, it's been here and it's been here for years. It's backed by very smart and talented individuals. They have raised funding. They're a very massive company and they even support and build chat bots for Home Depot, Google, BMW, JP Morgan, um, and the list goes on and on. Okay, so they have everything that you would require to build a nice UI for a fully functional AI chatbot. So if you scroll down here, you can see if they even have blogs, tutorials, they have a lot of education. Um, so there's a very, very good, they're a very good platform for you to learn and grow your AI building skills. And it's fairly easy. The UI is super nice and um, we can jump into it. Start building is free too. And then you should log in. I already have an account, so I'm just gonna log into my account. So what you're gonna wanna do is now you're on the dashboard, you have the top left is gonna be your workspace and your username. So this is ready at ready I gonna have team and billing. You're gonna have to be able to invite workspace members. You have a learn which redirects you to the documentation that shows you how to do anything that you would like to do. Um, there's tutorials for pretty much everything. Um, there's templates that you can literally copy. So you click on it. So if you want a complete retail chatbot template, you can start with a template and build upon that. Um, they have a what's new, which shows you the latest updates, um, which is probably the knowledge base, which is what it says here. So, and they have a Discord community that's very, very active and they're setting it up and they have a chatbot that can help you with anything else. Okay. So I just want to jump in and show you guys the features. Okay, so we'll say tests. So when you create an assistant, you have the option to choose what is the channel you'd like to make it on. Okay, so you have web chat and you have SMS, which is done through Twilio and you have WhatsApp, which is also done to, through Twilio, but uh, you can also do it through Meta as well directly. They have Microsoft Teams and they even have voice and IVR platforms and channels such as Amazon Alexa and they have Messenger coming soon. So for this example, I'm just going to show you guys web chat. We're going to press continue and we're going to create the assistant. Okay. So now that we're here, we can see some of a default template that's loaded. There always is every time you create a system, it's going to be a default template that just shows you how to do things. So as you can see, here's this quick start out of PF. Blah, blah blah, press the play button. It just shows you things you can do. I'm gonna delete this. There's a video on how to prompt chain and stuff like this, but I'm gonna let, I'm gonna do the explaining and not let the template because it's a little bit much if you don't know what's going on. So first things first, I want to clarify some things. Okay, so I'm not if you're not familiar with AI, there's something called vector databases, which a lot of the platforms use, like LangChain, to get the AI to process information and you have a custom knowledge base. So basically how it works is you upload a data source, which can be PDF, text, doc, um, URLs in this case, and voice flow. These are the data sources that they 
that they allow. Um, you just upload them, and then once it's uploaded, the back end of this is Pinecone. So it's a vector database that uploads the data source, uploads it to the vector database, and stores it in there. Um, and that's all you got to do. You don't have to do any of the back end work. It does it all automatically. Okay. So they have transcripts as well. So if you, when you talk to the AI assistant or the, the chat bot, it will store every single transcript here, which you can save them and make people look after them. If you'd like, you have analytics, they can show you how much interactions, how much users, how much sessions, what's the top intents, recognition rates, and you have integration. So you can even go deeper with API um, customization. So they give you the API access for each, every single part of this chatbot. Okay. And you have the settings where you can change the assistant name. You can add a custom image. You can change the language. You have, you can choose the message delay and you can have a global no match or a global no reply for default messaging. If there's a not a match for whatever they want, or if there's no reply, um, and you can set up the canvas situation and this metadata, we don't have to get into that. So these are the versions. So as you build your chat bot, you're going to update it constantly. So it will save each version if you'd like to go back to it. Okay. Go back to general. Yeah. Okay. Linux transcripts, obvious. Okay. Awesome. So now we can go into the actual chat bot flow. So how it works is there's a start node and this start node, you can click and drag and move it to wherever you like. It's an open, think of it as a, as canvas. To paint it's basically like that it doesn't have anything to do you can format it as however you want so you can put it here if you like move it here um essentially that's how you're going to do it so basically what this means is once the user starts the conversation it will go to this block okay and you can name this block for example you can name it welcome and ideally you'd say like hello welcome to my ai chat bot and you can format it as you like you can add a bold and underscore if you like and then so after the user starts it will go to this block and this block has a text card and it says, hello, welcome to my AI chatbot. And then if we like, we can get another sent to a different block. So after it says that it sends it to another block, which we can, we can, it's already has the default text card. We can say testing, are you there? So if we decide, if we click start test from here, press play. Hello, welcome to my AI chatbot testing. Are you there? So as you can see, it went from start to hello, welcome to my AI chatbot and testing. Are you there? These are text cards. So they just display text. There are more features. Like if you want to capture the user response, which is going to be listen. So you pre you go hover over the listen and you have options. So you have buttons, choice and capture. Meaning I use buttons and capture choice and buttons are quite similar, but buttons, you have buttons choice. You don't use the user has to manually type, which I prefer to use buttons in the case of web chat. In the case of different channels, such as WhatsApp, they don't have buttons integrated. You'd have to use choice in the voice flow builder. They have buttons, although you have to use, you have to set it up to the API. So in this case, um, it goes from here to welcome to my AI chatbot, And then it says testing, are you there? And now it's just sitting for an intent. So we can give it options. We can add one button. Yes. One button, second button, no. Okay. So right now we have, hello, welcome to my AI chatbot text, sends it to a next block check user check so this is checking if the user is actually there and it gives them an option to say yes or no so we test it out and as you see if you press yes nothing happens why as you see the red pops up there's nothing connected to these endpoints okay so if we want to if someone presses yes we want to if we want to create an action afterwards we're gonna have to drag add a new request okay so in this case we can start playing with the ai so as you can see here we can add a response AI. What a response AI is, it's basically the user said yes, we're gonna get the AI response, respond to the yes. So the way to do this, we have to prompt it through that. Um, when you have options, you can choose the AI model, which is a generic general use GBT type style model, which has no custom knowledge base, or you answer from the custom, not custom knowledge base AI model. So if you go back to knowledge base, in the top right, you have settings. Okay, if you click this, you can set up the model that stores the knowledge base. So this can be customizable to GPT-4, which is 25 times more expensive and token-wise, which we can get into later. But there's Cloud-1 and Cloud Instant V1, GPT-3.5 Turbo, and GPT DaVinci, DaVinci model. And you can also have a system prompt. So in this case, the default prompt is UR FAC AI Assistant, blah, 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 has all this other extra stuff. So we press save. So if we would like, to, if we uploaded something like our FAC for our website, we can ask um, the AI to answer from there. and 
In this case, we have no user input. All we have is a yes. So we probably go AI model because what does yes mean to a knowledge base? We'd have to specify, which is quite not useful. So what we do right now is the user said yes is there. So we can preview what the, the AI will generate. So in this case, it was generate, okay, great, how many assist you? Okay, to be honest, this is not a use case that you use response to AI because it's just a generic, okay, great, how many assist you? And it's expensive to use the AI. It's better to get a text and then copy and paste that. Um, okay, how um, may I assist you? Assist you? And then we just drag that in there. Okay, so now this is cheaper and it's just gonna be generic, but we can add variations. So we can generate five variations of this. So it's not the same every time, we press enter and enter. So now it will always ask a different variation of the same question. Okay, and next we can now ask the question and we want to get the user to type a response. In which afterwards we can get the AI to respond to that, which is a pro more proper use case for the AI response model. Okay, so it's going to capture the entire user response. So everything that the user responds with, it's gonna, and it's going to store it into a variable that's dynamic. So it changes ongoing into the conversation, which is going to be lost utterance. If we were going to save something that's more solid information, like your name, we would change this and create a new variable like name. But in this case, um, last utterance works just fine. Um, let me select it. Because it's not very important information. We just want to get what the, what the user wants. So they type whatever they typed, and then we can set a response CI to reply to that. So the user response replied, oh, I need help with my plumbing. We can get the AI model in this case because we have no knowledge base set up to say, that's it, last utterance. So whatever the user sends is, says is gonna be the prompt for the AI response. And we can customize this to be, you are an AI assistant, the system message, and we can change the temperature to make it more logic oriented. And then we can test the chat bot to see what we have so far. So if we run the test, are you there? Yes, how can we have service? Thanks, my plumbing. As you can see, replies in a format that makes a lot of sense, like a human would respond. And now you can see the, the potential use cases of this. Um, so that's pretty much it for the AI response. There's also a set AI. So as we said before, let's say if you wanted to capture like a valuable information like your name, we'll create a variable, that's name. Um, and then let's say you want to change your name with a prompt. Convert this into a mystical dragon. Um, and then apply to name. So we'll override the name variable of whatever they inputted um, by converting it's converting name and to it. So now the name, let's say the guy said John, it would convert it to this, Jorvian the Enchanted, and, a, and overwrite the save variable as that dragon name. So now John won't be the name, it will be the dragon's name. And if we test it out, let's say we can have this. And if we just rerun the test, yes, I'm there. Max as my name, because we now it saved Max instead of the name. And then I overwrite it in the set AI by using that prompt. And now it's, this is calling the name, it prints out the name, which is now Max or the Enchanted. So it was Max, but it got edited into a dragon, and that's the new saved name variable. Okay, so this is very useful because you can format different things. So um, that's a tool at your disposal. Um, another one that's very important would be, that's very basic, is gonna be the API is a must know. Um, it's fairly straightforward. It used to enter the request URL, add headers if you need be with the API keys um, and the parameters if you would like something more specific. And then you can capture the response from the API and then apply it to a variable, and then you can print the variable that is saved to. Okay, that's the essence of it. It's If you don't know any code, you can watch a lot of my tutorials on different API setups. Like I go over at Google Maps, API setup, Stack AI, API setup, um, Zapier, API setup. They're all in my videos. Um, 
I'll probably clip them in the future. Not in the future, probably this coming week, I'll have little shorts that show you how to speed run, how to add Zapier in the API with um, VoiceFlow. I have a video detailed actually on how to do that, but if you want something more short, that's coming. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so if you publish this, let's say version one, um, you can customize it further. So you, s let's go back actually, let's go designer. Let's go share. We can change the brand image to whatever icon we want. We can upload them and change the color purple and you can also do something quite impressive which is open a new tab and have a test with it so you can share this to clients and this icon will change to whatever brand icon that you uploaded so as you can see welcome to my ai chat bot testing are you there yes and we can figure the name so we'll say jonathan then it should give me a dragon name there you go so that's pretty much it um, on this basic tutorial for more complex Xapier integrations, um, I'll put the video in the description that I already did. Make sure if you guys want to join my Discord community, the link is in the description. It's ten dollars per week, and you get access to complex voice flow templates, and as well as tutorials that I will be limiting only to Discord, such as the scraping one that I have currently. Um, it's still in its infancy, but there's going to be a lot of great stuff coming out on there, hopefully. Um, it's also going to be open for free users in the short term, but it's not going to have the premium features. If you want the premium features, you're going to have to pay that $10 a week. And the price is going to go up soon. Reason being is I want to make it a very limited experience and a more one-on-one -on -one community oriented system. Um, if you would like to join, the link is in the description. It means a lot and it supports my channel. And make sure to like and subscribe to this video. Um, so the algorithm will be happy. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.